Nikkei Business just interviewed the former Sony manager Ishizuka and he shared quite some interesting insights about the Sony lens development history, about their relation with third party lens manufacturers and about the two cameras and in his opinion really made a difference in the email system. Before we dig into this, please take two seconds time to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button to not miss any of my upcoming videos. Ishizuka really gave very honest insights about the three mentioned topics and let's start with the Sony E-mount lens history. He confesses that right at the start their quality wasn't really the best. Uh, they were uh, beginners in that segment so for example the production yield was very bad. It means that many of the produced lenses at the beginning had issues but he also said they made an incredible effort to improve that and by now he believes that Sony makes top class lenses and he knows their reputation is very high with the recent GM lens releases they really proved that they can make very compact very fast focusing lenses with a top image quality and I think that's definitely true the latest uh, lenses released probably last couple of years are really stunning and I think everyone is happy with it that's something that Sony really deserves credit for and I also think it's one of the main reasons why people are jumping into the e-mount ecosystem and he said they all work together particularly on the autofocus front to make the best possible lenses um, for example the, all the face detection autofocus system is the best in class only because sensor so developers and lens developers are working together to create that fast and reliable autofocus performance, something that all the manufacturers cannot really do as Sony is doing. And I think this is really one of the reasons why Sony is always ahead when it comes to autofocus performance, that because the lens and sensor are really tailored to work together. There's also an interesting bit about third-party E-mount lens manufacturers. He really says that there was initially the option to not open the E-mount system, but for him personally, this would have been the strategy of the week, so he calls it. For him, it was more important to uh, grow, let grow the E-mount lens ecosystem as fast as it gets to catch up with Canon and Nikon and surpass them. And the only way to do this was to open the E-mount system, even if it meant that Sony would have earned a bit less money with their own Sony lens sales. And I believe this was definitely the winning strategy for Sony. And he also added that while the E-mount system is open, there is a sort of quality control uh, they don't let in every lens manufacturer um, without any control. They want to be sure that the third party manufacturer have a minimum of quality, consistency. And I think also that's a wise decision that makes sense. And therefore, it's interesting to hear that Sony actually has some leverage when it comes to third party manufacturer wanting to make e-mount lenses. And the third part that is really interesting is the fact that he thinks there are two cameras that are very important for the E-mount camera history. Two cameras that made a difference and made the E-mount successful. The first one being the A6000 that really sold in very high numbers and that proved that mirrorless can be as good as DSLRs. And this camera was released in 2014. The second camera being very important is the E7R2 that was released in August 2015 because it was the first camera having a fast reliable autofocus on full frame mirrorless. So those two cameras really show to the world that mirrorless is here to stay and is going to be the future compared to the DSLR cameras from Canon and Nikon. That's when Sony started to have cameras that are really appealing to um, professionals and people that usually spend a lot of money on cameras. And these two cameras allowed Sony to achieve their famous A1 project goal. The A1 project goal was the goal to be number one in the system camera market within five years of the E-mount start and they achieved the goal and they still today are the number one on the market in the system camera market and I believe this will not change for the next years uh, even if we sometimes complain about like the firmware strategy or the high pricing uh, 
Fact of the matter is that Sony is leading when it comes to the sensor performance, when it comes to the uh, lens performance and even the cameras, when they're released, they're usually best in class, like recently the ZV-E1 and the others are always playing catch up and sometimes also surpassing them. But then Sony answers with again, a new kind of camera with new uh, technology that will again be ahead. So for example, we expect the A9 III to be released likely in 2023 and to have a new stack sensor. So again, advancing the speed when it comes to having super fast autofocus and super fast frame per seconds, I believe the A9 III will be again top in class. And uh, so it will be for the A12 when it will be released likely in 2024, it will again raise the bar in this mirrorless segment. So I'm pretty sure Sony will stay ahead because they have the technology, the knowledge to stay ahead and also the will. And there's another reason why you have to subscribe to the channel because you know I'm often the very first to share insights about what's coming next from Sony and also from other manufacturers, but mainly of Sony. And like I told you before in other videos, the ZV-1 successor is coming within the next two weeks plus a new lens in June, likely 70, 200 millimeter um, macro 4.0G lens, but there will be also other lenses coming, plus of course the A6700, the A7C2, a surprise email camera is also coming this year. This, this is actually a camera that I'm really looking forward to it, and hopefully also the A93. And all that info we share exclusively on this channel, so I hope you will like this video and stay tuned and uh, yeah this is it for today and i see you soon for my next rumor videos